What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to LinkedIn Strategy 2024. I'm very excited to be here for the first live stream of uh, the year. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today, uh, about what's working on the platform. The always gonna come back to return on investment. Lead generation is a big thing for me. As you know, I wanna make sure that um, the average business owner can generate return on investment on LinkedIn immediately. What you can do to leverage your existing audience, how you can grow your audience, um, some of the awesome hacks that you can use for content marketing on the platform. Um, before I get started, let's make this as engaging as possible. The beauty of doing these live events is that you can all interact with me. I can see the comments coming through. We're broadcasting live on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Um, and so you can drop in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from, what city in the world you are in. Um, let me know which city you're in and, and drop in questions as we go through. I'll either bring them up at the appropriate time during the content um, or I'll address them at the end. But we will get through all of the questions um, as we go. And uh, look, I've, I've got a few free gifts for, for you for being here. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a couple of them at the end, um, but just to get the comments rolling in, if you wanna get a copy of my 12 best LinkedIn templates, messaging templates, um, for generating leads, for, for creating introductions for executives, um, then drop the word templates into the comments and I'll see those come through. We'll follow up all of them individually afterwards. Make sure you get that uh, free resource of the 12 best LinkedIn templates. Starting to see some comments come through. That's great, guys. We've got uh, Sharon from Perth, Abdullah from Phuket, beautiful part of the world. Um, keep them coming through, guys. Uh, we've got Melbourne, Jacqueline, there may be a little bit of a delay here, but we're starting to see some comments come through, guys. Um, oh, here they go, they're all coming in now. Hi, Brendan, hi, Barb, hi, Nicole, how you doing? Hi, Jeff, good to see you guys here. Um, Great to see lots of people on the call. We had uh, over 800 people registered on LinkedIn, which is just a testament of, of how well LinkedIn events works. Um, we managed to get all of those people on the call without doing any paid marketing whatsoever. Um, so I'm very excited about what I'm gonna share with you. By the way, um, LinkedIn is as good as it's ever been. I mean, I've been running this marketing agency specialized on LinkedIn for the last 12 years, and um, there's never been a better time to be on LinkedIn. It just keeps getting better and better, and your audience is way more engaged on the platform. They're literally spending five times as much time on the platform on a day-to-day -day basis as they were, which just means more opportunities if you know what you're doing. Um, so I've prepared some slides here to go through with you, so I'm gonna bring them up in a minute, but just wanted to say, Hello, welcome to you all, and make, make, let's make this as engaging as, as possible um, in the comments section here. I can see all your comments starting to come through. That's great, guys. Good to see you all here. Um, so let me bring up these slides and we'll get stuck into the content. Okay, there's the beautiful headline shot. Today's agenda, uh, we're gonna go through, these are the main uh, topics we're gonna go through, and within all this, I'm gonna be touching on more up-to-date strategies, like we're gonna cover, some stuff like um, AI, which I know is a big topic at the moment, and I'm sure you guys all got a lot of questions about that. I've been using AI extensively in the last three months, and I want to share with you some of the things I've been able to accomplish so that you can do it too. And um, we're going to cover why LinkedIn, um, the three ways to, to grow a business and how LinkedIn fits into that. Um, building a powerful profile. With anything we do on LinkedIn, it all comes back to having a really awesome uh, profile that converts visitors to leads. Quite often it's a missing point, like a lot, a lot of um, creators out there that, that get uh, thousands and thousands of views on, on their uh, content, um, but it doesn't convert into return on investment and quite often it's to do with the profile. Um, how to create engaging content uh, and it, it, look, what worked a few years ago or even a year ago for that matter is not what works today. There's some really awesome creators on the platform now that I've learned a lot from um, that are doing things different ways. Some guys are really good at video, some guys are really good at the written word, um, some guys are really good at articles and images, and you've got to find a style that works works for you. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to do that. Um, how you can create three months worth of content in a few hours this is something I do for all of my clients, and it's not just an efficient way to do it, but it's also a very effective way to do it as well, because you're strategically planning your content in advance. Um, how to create ROI from content. I mean, this is something that I talk about again and again. Um, 
I think that everything you should be doing on social media uh, should create ROI. So easy to waste a lot of time on social media um, and not get any return on investment from it. And so we want to avoid that. Um, my three-step lead generation strategy, which I've been using for over 12 years now, we've generated over $500 million worth of sales for our clients using this system. It's a simple system. It's a very effective system. And I'm going to share that with you. And then what you can do to get started and some free resources to help you along the way. Um, for those of you that haven't uh, he heard me speak before, I'll just give you a little bit of uh, background. My career has been in digital marketing. Since the age of 16, I was go approaching companies and saying, hey, if I generate leads for you, can I get a small commission on the leads that I generate? Um, hacked my way to the top of Google uh, for various businesses, been recruited to work in Asia. I worked in Thailand and, and Hong Kong managing sales and marketing teams. Um, always been very passionate about sales, uh, but my marketing skills became quickly more in demand. And I think the reason that I have been quite effective at marketing, especially from a business owner's perspective who's looking for a consultant or somebody to run their marketing and sales teams, um, is that I have that sales focus. And so what I'm talking about on, mark on the marketing side is always geared back to return on investment. And I think that's really important with anything you do in marketing. Um, these days, you know, I. I there's a lot of talk about you know, personal branding and branding and, and, and building your audience, which may be a little bit more difficult to measure on return on investment, but you can still measure it. And it's something I do believe in. And I'm going to explain to you where it fits into your marketing strategy, because it's not enough just to do that alone. It's not enough just to grow your audience, post content and get loads of followers. Um, you need to gen generate return on investment. And that's why I'm hesitant to start, you know, talking about all the followers I have and all the impressions on content that I've got in the past because it's not actually the secret to, to making money on LinkedIn. It's not necessarily how many followers you have. It's how engaged that audience is and how well you're able to translate that, that into return on investment. Um, so that's very important. We've got loads of comments coming through, guys. Good to see you guys being interactive. Um, by the way, the, these two awards here, um, uh, the Social Media Marketing Awards, uh, is something that's run in Australia. It is, it is an open international, but um, a lot of the companies are from Australia. Uh, I won uh, Best Use of LinkedIn in 2019 and 2020. I've been a finalist um, loads of times, um, but these particular campaigns, one was for LinkedIn Heroes, which was an, on, uh, an interview series where I interviewed a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs managed to get some really famous guests on and um, those videos are all available on YouTube um, and uh, 2020 was from doing these live streams Monday Night Live you know and so they measured that on a bunch of things but um, I think the fact that I'm focused on return on investment and translating that into business something I demonstrated in my award entry made a big difference um, I've worked with thousands of businesses now um, some of the big ones you may have heard of, uh, you know, Apple, um, Westpac, Western Union, uh, guys like this. Um, I've worked with loads of small businesses as well, lo loads of consultants. Um, anyone in B2B or in professional services does really well on LinkedIn. You'll notice a lot of financial services companies I've worked with. Be being in, in, with a background in marketing, something like financial services, you know, what's your alternatives on, online? You, you advertise on Google, you're paying almost between 50 to to $100 a click now. So it's very hard for you to compete with the big banks or whatever um, to translate that into return on investment. And so something like LinkedIn, where you can direct approach professionals with high net income, that kind of thing um, works really well. I've done a lot of capital raising for businesses. Um, again, anything where you need to reach out to a specific type of professional to generate leads, I'm your man about getting that strategy right to translate it into return on investment. Um, that's my Instagram handle there, Nat Bibby. That's where you sort of see what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I share a bit more personalized content there. And obviously, Nathaniel Bibby on LinkedIn. Make sure you go to my profile, hit that notification bell uh, on the profile, which you see towards the top right. That means you get notified every time I do a post. I, I try to um, provide value in every post I do. And I'm going to explain to you how, how my methodology for doing that. There's four ways that I use to add value. Um, so we'll go through that shortly too. Um, by the way, I started my business um, 12 years ago after I uh, lost my job. The company I was working for went into some financial issues. Um, I hadn't been paid in three months. You know, it was a company I did believe in, but they, they were growing too fast, I guess, and tried to do a, a listing on the stock market and it, it went south. And, um, 
Yeah, so I, I was driving home after losing that job, broke, uh, my car didn't have much fuel in it and I didn't know how I was going to fill it up again and I, I got home and I, um, as the sun went down, I went to turn on the lights and um, my electricity had been cut off and I, I, was, I was behind on my rent so I wasn't too far off actually being evicted from my rental apartment, my electricity was cut off. And um, that night I connected two extension cables together so I could run them down the stairway of my apartment building and the other end I connected to a desk lamp and I sat under that desk lamp that night and um, wrote my business plan for creating this, this LinkedIn marketing agency and the next day I, I hit the phones and um, uh, managed to get a meeting with a real estate business. We uh, did some work for them, made, I made $15,000 sale that, that that first meeting I did um, and, and the business was born. So, you know, I, I'm somebody that uh, has built a business without investors um, using my own uh, sales and marketing expertise. So I've really gathered what I've learned from the streets, so to speak, um, which I know some of you will appreciate. Um, what's going on here? Okay. Um, so... Several years ago on Bondi Beach, there was a, uh, a um, protest against climate change. And you can see all the people here who attended sticking their head in their sand to protest climate change. And this is, I put this up because this reminds me of what I see happening on LinkedIn. Um, you've got to remember that LinkedIn was created as a recruitment platform. And so a lot of business professionals are on there and they, I hear this, maybe four or five times a day when people ask me what I do and I say, hey, I'm in LinkedIn marketing. They say, oh, I've got a LinkedIn profile. Um, I don't really use it. I get a few job offers here and there. Um, and so 90% of people, whether you're in sales or you're a business owner or, or you work for somebody else and you're just looking to advance your career, um, don't, know, don't know how to use the platform so they choose to ignore it. Um, I, th I would say at least 90% of people on LinkedIn don't know what they're doing on the platform at all. So the idea today is to shed some light onto what you should be doing. So you're not just wasting a bunch of time scrolling the, scrolling the feed um, without actually understanding where you should be focusing your attention. Um, so let's bring it back before we get into the nuts and bolts strategies uh, of how this translates into business. So. Within five to 10 years, depending on where you're located in the world, 90%, if not more, of businesses will go out of business. Um, and so, if you think about it, if most businesses are failing within five to 10 years, you've gotta be doing something different than most businesses in order to survive and thrive. And by the way, those 10% that do survive, then doesn't mean they're necessarily profitable, just means they're still in the ring. And so, um, uh, you've gotta be doing something different than the norm. And what I'm going to talk about today is a strategy with uh, always a bunch of strategies that can help you do that differentiate yourself. There's three ways to grow a business in my experience. One is more clients go out and get more clients. Two is increase your transaction size. Three is you can get people to buy more often. Um, so when I first started my career, I was very much focused on more clients, more clients, more clients. And um, I'm gonna to explain to you why the other two are really important um, in this next slide here. So I'm just gonna talk through some numbers. They're pretty basic, so just bear with me. Um, let's say you're running a, a small business and you've got 12 clients and your average sale is $10,000. And generally people buy twice. If you do the math on those numbers, you've got 12, times 10 times two, your revenue is 240,000. Now, if you can increase the number of clients by just four, I mean, could we all agree that it'd be reasonable to increase the number of clients by four, four clients in a say 12 month period? I'm sure you could do it quicker, but let's say in 12 month period, you increase the number of clients from 12 to 16, and then you increase your average sale um, by delivering more value or, or improving your product from 10,000 to 12,000. Okay, these are really achievable numbers. Increase the frequency, get people to buy from you one more time every two customers, right? So two and a half times. You've, all, you've just doubled your revenue by achieving little growth in small areas. So if you're just focusing on one area like number of clients, um, you're not gonna achieve that growth. Whereas if you focus on all three, um, you can double your revenue, revenue in what I would say a relatively conservative um, way. 
Now, let's say if you got the numbers up to 21, just over 21 um, clients a year, so say the following year, um, and then the average sales 14,400 and people buy from you just over three times, you've doubled it again. So you've got a 960,000. So you can see how easily you can go from a, a, a small business to a million dollar business just by following this system. And what I'm gonna suggest is if you follow these LinkedIn marketing strategies, it will increase the number of clients, it will increase the average sale, and it will increase the frequency for a number of different reasons. Um, one of the biggest ones that I think is often overlooked when people are starting out is you actually learn from your audience what your customers want by what content they engage with. One of the reasons that content creators who are really successful, that may not be celebrities or something like that, you may have heard of a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, is a great example, is because they really listen to what their audience is engaging with. It's not enough just to plan your content and post your content for the month and just keep doing that over and over again. What you wanna do is at the end of the month, work out which content are people engaging with, which content generated leads, and, then, and you're making note of that so you can create more content like that moving forward. And I'm gonna share with you how I batch create content using this exact strategy. Um, this is an example of how you can increase your profile views. I mean, this was somebody that, that joined the team and within, uh, what was it? Eight days, they, they went from zero profile views to 232, just by doing a couple of things we're talking about. Um, before we go into the profile optimization, I thought I should talk about what not to do on the platform. And uh, these are some of the ones that I've come across on, um, on LinkedIn. Sexual entrepreneur, this, this person particularly has is, is made a rant about her boyfriend. Hey, cheating lie, my ex-boyfriend cheating on me. Don't do this, guys. <laughs> Okay, these are a couple of examples from a couple of our clients. So when it comes to your profile, um, the most important part of your profile is, is your photograph, right? So it's worthwhile getting a professional headshot done. Um, and then once you want it to be industry specific, you know, so these guys are financial, uh, Ashwin's in finance, uh, Craig is a peak performance expert. Um, so they're generally dealing with corporates. Um, so, you know, suit is appropriate. Um, you might see in marketing, um, guys wearing t-shirts and stuff like that. It's, this comes down to personal branding. Um, and I think with personal branding, it's a combination of being authentic. I think it's really important for you to have your values aligned with your personal brand. So it's not really something that I believe that you architect. It's something that you learn how to express. Um, and so that you're aligned with, with your personal brand. And a lot of people have these ideas or preconceived ideas of what a personal brand should be like or try to copy somebody else's. I don't believe that's the way to do it. Um, I believe it's by identifying uh, who you are, the value that you add and, and portraying that um, through everything that you do. And, and you've got to remember that LinkedIn is a social media site. So personal brand on LinkedIn is really important. This is your website uh, for the professional world, your window into the professional world. Um, and so the next mo most important part, obviously, is the headline, because if you ever scroll around on LinkedIn, what do you see? You generally see, if, if you're looking in the news feed or somebody sends you a message, you're always going to see their photograph and you're going to see their headline. So the first thing is the headline is quite important to, to explain to people what you do, give people a little bit of an idea of what it is you do. Too many times people will have in their headline, you know, business development manager of XYZ company or CEO of... XYZ company doesn't actually explain what you do. Um, and so yes, it might work if you're looking to advance your career, but if you're in sales or looking to grow a business, then um, you wanna put some keywords in there that are relevant to your audience so they'll understand what it is that you do. Um, people will be searching for keywords on LinkedIn, like for example, financial planning. If you're looking for a financial planner, people will punch that into LinkedIn and see who comes up, who's already in their network. Just by having that keyword in your headline, it means that you're more likely to rank towards the top, especially if you're connected with them. When you do a search on LinkedIn, you'll notice that the first people you see are your first degree connections, people you're already connected with. Then you see your second degree connections, which people have mutual connections with you, and then, and then so on and so forth. You're not gonna see everyone in the search results. So what, what I see in the search results is different to what you see. If you're, if somebody has 100 um, connections and they do a search, they might only see 500 people that are in financial planning or, or less. Um, and that's just because they haven't grown their network in that area very, very much yet. So when I first started using LinkedIn, I was working for an online marketing agency. And I said to my um, boss when I first joined the company, what are the best clients for online marketing? And he said, well, 
funny you should ask, medical practices are, particularly plastic surgeons and dentists, are great because they, they don't know anything about marketing. They're always looking for new clients and they've got the money to invest because their clients are worth so much when they come on board. Um, and so I went through the process of um, going and contacting uh, all of the surgery clinics and dental practices in Melbourne, uh, tried to access them through the phone and, and didn't get past the practice managers. The cold calling that I've had experience in wasn't working for these particular businesses. So I went out in the car and, and tried door knocking on some of the biggest clinics. And again, couldn't get past the practice manager. And this is really when I came across LinkedIn. I thought, hey, here's a new website um, with professionals on it. Sales and marketers, are, sales people and marketers weren't on the platform. It was mainly used for recruiting. So I did a search, found some surgeons, started connecting with them. I connected with 10 in a week, um, sent them all a message. I got six responses. I had four meetings and I made one sale from contacting them on LinkedIn because so I could reach the directly to the the practice owner or the or the head surgeon um, and say, hey, you know, I'm working for this marketing agency. We specialize in marketing for medical practices. I'd love to have a meeting to see if we can add some value to what you're doing. Um, and so the next week I did 20. And then what happened is over time, I had so many meetings um, with these different medical practices around the country that we became the specialists in that area. Me specifically was the online marketing specialist for medical practices. And every time I'd reach out to a new dental practice um, or a surgeon, they'd see, oh, geez, this guy's got thousands of connections in my industry. They must be doing something right. What am I missing out on? And so you can very quickly become the expert in a perceived industry just by following this, this practical advice. Um, All right, here are some stats around the number of views you can expect on content if you know what you're doing. I mean, this is over just over, yes, this is a one year period. Um, my LinkedIn content, this is all organic, no, no paid ads involved in this. Um, over a million views, uh, 29,000 likes, 10,800 comments, 911 shares, um, engagement rate, Four and a half percent. So, sorry, three point six four percent. I did, did a lot of posts during that year. Um, so, obviously, the more posts you do, the more views you get, you're going to get. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to post ten times a day or anything like that. You need to, to be consistent with what you're doing. But cut along story short, if you post more, you're going to get more views and engagement. It doesn't matter if every post doesn't get a lot of engagement. You'll notice that some of mine don't get many at all. But it's better off doing it than not doing it because if people are seeing it, it's going to increase your stats. Um, as long as it's adding value. So I think as soon as you, you're trying to rush posts in there because you want to hit a quota or something and, then, and it's detracting value, you're going to get audience fatigue and people are going to get tired of seeing your posts. Um, so I think post as much as you uh, feel comfortable doing. Look, you've got to be doing it at least three times a week. It's got to be three to four times at least a week in order for you to be consistent with your audience. So this is where the planning comes into it. Um, when I create content for clients, we batch create three months worth of content in a one hour video shoot. The video editors edit all the videos and we post for them two or three times a week um, and write all the captions and everything. And we're going to talk about what to write the captions because that's really important. Um, as well, and look. By the way, these stats. Like, I'm by no way am I one of the best creators on LinkedIn. These are good stats. Um, they've translated into a lot of business for me. Um, and I'm not the best writer. I'm not the the best video creator. Um, but I believe that I am one of the best at translating all of this attention into return on investment, which actually makes it a lot easier for me to help the average business owner um, because it's difficult to become the world's best copywriter. Um, it's difficult to get excellent video production, but I'm going to show, share with you some easy ways that you can do it, engage your audience, grow your audience and translate it into return on investment, which I think is what we all want. There's something we need to understand before we get into the content side of things. Um, this is something that I've picked up five or six years ago when interviewing a, a guy in Australia called Kerwin Ray. Um, he's a business coach, he's done exceptionally well on social media, and um, he talks about the mere exposure effect. And all it is, is it's a psychological phenomenon, which is a couple of long words, but it, it just means that people um, develop a preference for things merely because they are familiar with them. So it's often called the familiarity principle. So put it this way, right? If I... Um, if I was, all things being equal, I was driving down the street and I fancied a soft drink, I saw 
three billboards of Coca-Cola and I didn't see any Pepsi billboards, all, all things being equal, I'm more likely to buy Coca-Cola than Pepsi just because it's more familiar. So the, I think about content like this, right? How do I create valuable content so it shows up in front of my audience again and again so when it comes time for them to look for a LinkedIn marketing provider, I'm the provider that's most familiar. And this is the reason why I do things like this LinkedIn events is just to, to constantly be giving value so that when it comes up in the company, in the board meeting, they're like, hey, we need to get someone in to train our team on LinkedIn. Oh, I know this guy, Nathaniel, he posts great content, Let, let's get him in. Um, and, and that's something that's not necessarily easy to measure, but it's a psychological shift when you're posting content rather than to think, how do I get this to generate me business now? It's more like, how do I get another exposure in front of my audience? So 20 years ago, five exposures would be enough to be competitive, you know, between somebody being problem aware, real, realizing they need a, a, a provider, you show up five times, you're gonna get the sale. These times are so much, these days there's so much competition, um, it needs to be 25 times, 25 exposures, bare minimum, um, for, for, before they're gonna buy from you. So you just wanna have this working for you as a system in the background. Now, the average social media engagement rate, this blew my mind when I come across this statistic, is 0.1%. So what that means is you don't have to be the best. The, most people on social media are terrible at this. Um, so don't beat yourself up if your conversion rates aren't huge. If you're better than 0.1%, then you're doing better than the pack. And it's, uh, that's what it's all about. If you wanna get customers, it's about being better than your competitors. Um, what's happening in the world now, just so you understand the, the, the trends that are going on, I mean, this is particularly obvious, but it's very relevant to what we're talking about today, is people, are ha people have less time and they've got way more choices. So obviously they're just gonna start to ignore stuff. So posting regularly becomes important. Uh, chatting to people in the DM, starting conversations becomes really important. It's not just enough just to post once here and there. That, that's really not gonna work. It doesn't matter how good the post is, doesn't matter if it goes viral. Um, so people's, people are gonna forget about stuff. I mean, reposting and reusing content becomes more valuable because people are gonna be less aware that they've seen it before. Um, you can repost stuff. The reposting has got a lot better on LinkedIn using that repost tool. It actually will notify people in your network. Um, so make use of that and then just re, re, um, recreate content in different ways. Um, when it comes to creating content, this is the main problem that I see most people have and, and a lot of social media marketing experts, so-called experts, um, have this issue as well. Um, you can be unfocused or you can be focused. And this is a decision you need to make before you start posting on LinkedIn. It's not enough just to get everyone in the, in the boardroom and say, okay guys, we need to start posting more on LinkedIn. We need to do it in a focused way because if you're unfocused, what happens is you're reactive, you're not in control. You're unsure about the future, no breathing room. This means that you're rushing to get posts out in the morning, you know, and we need to get a post out today. What are we gonna do about, oh, we'll just do this. Instead of having something created already that's in your content pillars, that's strategic, um, you're second guessing yourself and you procrastinate a lot as well. Um, you can waste a lot of time if you're unfocused. Whereas if you're focused, you know what to say no to. You know what you know what your strategy strategy is. You're proactive. You know what opportunities you want to engage with. What to do when a comment comes your way. Whether to accept in a connection request, and you can easily make uh, confident decisions. So the reason that a lot of people don't um, make it when it comes to content marketing, and this really comes down to personal branding, is they're impatient. Um, so you need to be patient, it's something that you need to be consistent with. You wanna just see that your stats are improving um, on a week to week basis. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually make money along the way. Um, and then the other reason is people are selfish, right? Um, this little GIF's not playing here, but um, <laughs> this lady's uh, tried to get some popcorn off Mr. Bean and he won't share it with her. Um, there's nothing that I do on social media or LinkedIn uh, that I use to, to grow my audience and make sales that I don't share publicly for free, by the way. And then what happens is businesses um, either realize it's too difficult and want to outsource to us or they want to get me to consult with them so it's specific to their industry. Um, but there's nothing I gatekeep. There's no, no content that I um, don't share publicly. 
when it comes to uh, customer behavior, there's a c customer journey that you need to be aware of. And um, I'm gonna show you how content fits into this. You've got the awareness stage, uh, where people are aware that they have a problem, then they've got interest, then weighing up competitors, making a decision, and then taking action. When you're creating organic content on LinkedIn, a lot of people make the mistake of appealing to somebody who is making a decision, for example. Um, so they might post things like testimonials or here's some information about our products. Um, what you want to focus on is the biggest pool, which is the awareness pool. People that are aware of what you do, might be problem aware, might realize they have a problem. You wanna to talk to these problem, uh, PP people, sorry. Um, a lot of people don't spend enough time talking about the problem that they solve. So in your business, what problem is you, you solve? And you'll, if you post on something on LinkedIn that says, hey, this is the five best ways to optimize your profile, it won't do as well as these are the five mistakes you wanna avoid on your profile. Why? Because it caters more for the awareness stage. People that uh, can relate to the mistakes they're making, M mistakes and what not to do actually uh, generate more engagement than their actual solution. So focus on the problem, talk about the problem, um, and then give a little bit of insight to the solution towards the end. But um, when I'm writing on an article, for example, I'm more or less 60, 70% talking about the problem because that's what people will relate to. Um, storytelling is extremely important. We are very lucky to live in this day and age because we have beautiful AI, ChatGPT, and similar uh, platforms like that that can come up with ideas and help you write stories. You can literally put a post into ChatGPT and say, hey, tell, write me a story that I can use um, related to this draft caption, for example. Um, and then you can work with ChatGPT to get it to reword it, throw your own spin on it. Um, but storytelling is something I'm using all the time. You've noticed I've already told a couple of stories. That's what people engage uh, with. You want to come up with a story around your brand that you can share in content. People are going to relate to that a lot more. Steve Jobs is a big believer in storytelling. And you'll notice that any of the big influencers are great at this particular skill, storytelling. Um, when it comes to remarkable content, um, there's a few scientific things uh, that you need to understand um, about how people consume content. And so one, start with the eyes, then appeal to the mind and then aim for the heart. So why do I say start, for the, start with the eyes? Um, sorry for my face being in the way of this particular stat, but almost 50% of your brain is involved in visual processing. 70% of all your sensory receptors are in your eyes and we can get a sense of a visual scene in less than one and tenth of a second. So what does that mean for you creating content? Well, it needs to be visual. So you wanna put an appropriate picture uh, with the content. If you're doing pictures, uh, you'll always do better if the picture has got your face in it, right? Um, I wouldn't worry too much about editing uh, graphics on pictures and stuff like that because it come across as an ad. But if you can get, get some photographs taken of yourself, you can do it with your phone um, in, in context. So if you're talking about um, work-life balance, you may have a picture with yourself at the park with your daughter. I'll show a post that I did uh, with, with that photo. Um, if you're talking about productivity hacks, it may be a picture of you at your desk with your laptop. So something that's relevant. You don't want to post irrelevant pictures just for the sake of it. Um, but um, those photos will do well. And then videos. Videos are really important. What's most important is the first 15 seconds of the video where you hook people in. And you can also put a customized thumbnail on your videos now on LinkedIn. So think about that when you're posting your videos. What is the thumbnail? Because a lot of people post content the thumbnail's got no one in it, you know? They may have just turned the camera on and they run around the side to speak to the camera. Thumbnail ends up being uh, a, an empty scene, which you don't want. So just think about this visual processing, very important, something I put a lot of thought into. People will always interact with things that re resonate with them on a personal level. So people will actually resonate and, and engage more with your challenges than they will with your successes. So being confident enough to be able to talk about some of the things you've had to overcome will actually get more engagement than you just talking about all your wins and how successful you are. That's when you become a human brand, that's where you become authentic, 
Um, and so talk about th things that challenges that you've had to overcome as opposed to just giving people a solution and saying, hey, I'm the expert. Talk about how, how you how you learn that skill or how you develop that insight. Um, talk about the mistakes that you've made. Very important. OK, I know it's a lot of information, guys, but I've got to jam as much in here as I can. Uh, if any of you heard me speak before, I always talk about adding value. Those who add the most value through content or any way for that matter will win in business. Um, there's four ways that you can do that. So information, inspiration, entertainment and education. I just want to talk a little bit more about this before we move, move on. So um, the ones that I find most effective are inspiration. So sharing inspirational content can be like something like hitting a milestone in your business. You might be shared that, that you've won an award, but bring it back to storytelling when you share those things. You know, I started my business broke, um, couldn't put petrol in my car and, and, and you know, and I'm so proud that now we're able to help so many people and we've won this award. For example, just something like that. I'll show you a couple of examples in a sec. Um, inspiration does really well. You don't have to be sharing always about yourself, inspiring content about yourself. You can share inspiring quotes. You can share inspiring stories of your clients. That, that does really well, sharing client wins. Um, I've shared a post before where I did some capital raising for a client. They managed to raise a million bucks in three weeks. Shared that, uh, got about 45 messages in my inbox from businesses looking to raise capital that wanted me to do the same thing for them. Very effective way to generate leads. Education also very important. Don't try and um, don't try and share too much in one post. Focus on one key learning in each post, uh, so it's easy for people to digest. Um, but educate your audience on what you do. Ed educate your audience on insights about your niche. You can even go outside your niche and educate stuff about other stuff. It's still uh, an exposure, and it's still going to engage your audience. Um, doesn't always necessarily have to be exactly about what you do. Um, information is a, is a very easy way to to share insightful content. So, for example, like if you're in the building industry and you know some information's coming out um, that it's going to impact homeowners, for example, um, you can share that with your audience. Yes, you may have heard about it already through other news sites, but you've got to pe remember people in your industry are not um, is going to be clued on or following the updates as as much, and so you can be the gatekeeper of that news to the audience. It's a little bit like when um, LinkedIn introduces a new feature like story to, uh, stories they had for a while, um, you know, I learned about it and I created an article, created a video, hey, LinkedIn stories is on the platform, sharing people how to use it. I'm giving them information um, and, and they're hearing about it from me first. It's a great way to add value. Entertainment's a big one. Um, well, it is a very powerful one. It's not one that I see used a lot on LinkedIn. A lot of people don't have the confidence to share entertaining stuff, uh, especially because it's a professional network. Sometimes you can bring stuff across from other platforms that you see that does well, like Instagram, Facebook, and entertain your audi audience. Share something funny. I've always believed that comedians will do really well on LinkedIn, and there's a couple of them, couple of them active now on there. Um, that's a great way for you to add value to your audience as well. Um, here's an example of an inspiration post. Uh, this was back when I reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I think I'm up to about 17,000 now, so 3,000 more subscribers, and I'll, <laughs> I'll do another post like this uh, for 20k. And you know, in the past, I would think, you know, I would never share share how. Oh, look at me, how many followers I have. I would think, what a what a wanker, you know. Um, but I bring it back to like I'm proud that I'm able to create enough valuable content that all these people want to subscribe to what I do. Um, it's not about popularity, it's about adding value and that needs to be celebrated. And, and so that's what I wrote in the post. And you can see down the bottom here is 504 likes, 99 comments, loads of views, um, very effective post. And it literally just wrote 10K on a whiteboard and held up the glass of wine to, <laughs> I was having to celebrate. Um, and that, that post did really well. Now, education. Um, so a great way to do this is through videos and you can, you, uh, we, when we interview clients, um, we interview them for about an hour and use that to create 20 short videos. Each video should be about two minutes long really, you don't really want longer than that. Can be shorter than that, it's just you know, how quick can you get the value across. Um, so editing becomes important to cut out all the waffle. 
Um, and then you can see how I've written this post, how do you measure success on LinkedIn at the top? This is what they call a hook. So the first sentence on your post is quite important. Um, because that's what's going to entice people to read more. So you've got to think about what do you want to tell people about this post in one sentence and try and keep the sentence uh, one line long. <laughs> Don't make it too long. How do you measure success on LinkedIn? Ideally, eight words or less. Um, and so if people want to know the answer to that question, they'll keep reading. Um, and I entice people to watch the video. And then at the end, you'll see what about you? How do you measure success on LinkedIn? Interested to hear your comments, encouraging people to drop a comment that that can make a big difference. Get some comments on your post. It does a lot for your engagement and information talked about this LinkedIn stories example. Um, so this is an article I wrote four ways to grow your brand with LinkedIn stories probably came out. Oh, five or six days at a maybe even a week after the LinkedIn announced that it was using LinkedIn stories. They've actually removed them from the platform since. Um, but this is just an example of, of how you can use information. So again, starting with a question, are you using LinkedIn stories for your business? Here are four ways you can leverage this new tool to drive engagement, right? Um, entertainment. Uh, this was a post a video that I came across where someone got um, won a competition and they got Liam Neeson to write a, uh, do a profile video for them. And you know, it's funny. And, and so, you know, I've got 107 comments or what, what have you. And um, this is an example of how you can use that in your in your content. Um, okay, so now I want to just talk briefly about building positive anticipation. You want to and this comes back to the hook, like drive positive anticipation so that people want to read more. Um, and now I'll give you some examples of how you can do this. So these are a few hooks that, you, that I've seen that, that work well. Uh, running your small business is a big job. You need help. This is a statement that people are generally going, can agree with. And so then they'll want to read more. You notice that there's a longer sentence first and then a smaller sentence. You can actually space those out. And so that there's a line break in between these two sentences that'll keep people engaged and wanting to read more. You want to lose weight together. We can make it happen. 78% of CEOs think marketers don't focus on ROI. We do these are examples of hooks. Um, and here is uh, another one that you can use to create curiosity. You may want to take a screenshot of this one. Um, I hated it. So that's the first sentence and then you go on to what you hated, but people are immediately going to see that. The see that you posted it, asked themselves, what, what did he hate? I ended the partnership. They want to know more. They said no. So it's not telling people what the post's about. It's another way to do it. It's about creating anticipation. So, oh, I hit a roadblock. What roadblock did you hit? Let me read more. Um, this is one of the most valuable slides in this deck. It may seem a little bit um, silly, but whenever I've used uh, statements like this, it gets people to read more it works incredibly well. This is some the, this list is created from my own experience, but also from following some of the most um, effective copywriters in the world. And so don't don't ignore this slide. Um, using th hooks like this at the start of your post will create curiosity. Okay. Is this valuable so far guys drop in the comments, keep the comments coming through. Lots of people requesting the templates. If you've jumped, just jumped straight on. Um, I have a document I created on my 12 best LinkedIn messaging templates. If you want a copy of those, drop in the word templates in the chat. Um, good to see loads of you here. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? <laughs> you see what everyone else is doing and that's for receiving templates. Exactly. Brad, we'll get those to you after the call. David, Greg. Wendy and a lot more comments coming through. Thanks guys for, for dropping in the chat there. Um, oh, another example of how to create a cool hook. What was your childhood business? This one's actually generated towards the audience. Um, I did an interview with a guy called Jules Lund. He's the founder of Tribe. He was also a very popular TV and radio host. Um, and this post is just worded so well. Um, you see how each sentence is, is, is line breaks between the others. So it's very easy to read. What was your childhood business? At 12, I washed cars out of my house for $3 each. That was the boring part. Seasoning the neighbor's car with dust from my mum's vacuum cleaner, cleaner bag the night before was a fun bit. More hustle in part one of my chat with Nathaniel Bibby. So it's not necessarily a long post, but it's really well written. Each sentence is short, then long, short, then long. It's a very effective way for you to write captions just to keep people reading. 
Um, getting loads of comments coming through, guys. Oh, Nicole said, interested to know your thoughts on how many words characters you should post with. Um, well, there's a couple of things that you want to consider when it comes to um, how many words characters you should post with because you don't want to go on more than you have to. It's about how many words do I need to get to keep the um, jargon out of it and, and to get the value across to get people enticed to know more. There is a lot of value in posting a caption that actually occupies the entire screen on your phone. So when you're scrolling through the news feed on LinkedIn, if you open a, up a post and say, see more, you kind of want it to, to cover the screen. It, but the image might cover half of it and then maybe a wording at the top depends on, on the post. Um, but just so that if, if it's too short, um, they're gonna see a bit of another post above and a little, another post below. It's easy to get distracted. Very small nuance, um, but something to consider. Um, but if it's valuable, long posts do really well. I mean, you'll notice some of my posts when I'm doing like seven steps um, to create more valuable content, for example. Obviously, it's a bit longer, but there's a lot of value there and they do really well. Um, so I hope that helps just give you a couple of ideas. Um, again, I'm hammering home about the, the hooks and the calls to action here. So this particular post may not be able to read up, try to in increase the size. Uh, what are your thought on, thoughts on engagement pods? And that encourages people to want to know more. You see even in the video, I've got the title there, engagement pods. Um, so people know what it's about. I've even got an emoji there, um, which gets people more excited about watching the content. And then at the end, there's something simple as let us know your thoughts, invites people to join the conversation in the comments section. Um, and you can see I've used an emoji there to point down to the comments. Um, I generally don't use more than one or two emojis in my captions on LinkedIn. Um, you, I think it can come across a little bit you know, Instagram-y or less professional using too many um, uh, emojis, but they they do have a place on LinkedIn. Sometimes to highlight an emotion, I will use an emoji, um, but I don't use them by any means through through every um, line of my content. Might use it two or three times. Um, hashtags are a great way to uh, create branded content. So one of the things that's different uh, with the likes of Instagram, right, is when you go to LinkedIn, you don't, it's not as easy to see a library of someone's content. Sure, if you know where to click, you can see their posts and stuff. Um, but if you, particularly if you're creating um, different content pillars, like for example, I have one that's hashtag ask Nat. Um, so what happens is when I put that at the end of my caption, people can click on that hashtag and then they can see all of the posts with the hashtag ask Nat in it. Um, occasionally there's a couple of other people that use it, but mostly it's my content. I use the same thing with my LinkedIn heroes uh, interviews. You go hashtag LinkedIn heroes, you can see all my interviews um, there and that's one of the, the campaigns I won an award for. Uh, when I used to go live every Monday, hashtag Monday Night Live. In terms of bringing extra eyeballs, look, there is research that says that um, hashtags bring extra eyeballs into your content. Um, and and the research seems credible, right? But um, I haven't seen a huge difference in, in the number of eyeballs on my content by using hashtags. Uh, I suggest using three, one of them a branded um, hashtag, and two of them can be more specific to what your content's about. It's about telling, it does tell LinkedIn what your, plat what your content's about, so there is some value in that. Um, but to be honest, me personally haven't noticed a huge amount. When I'm doing it for clients, I always use three hashtags, just as a general rule. So look, I'm sorry that's a bit blurry there. I'll explain what he, what this um, particular uh, slide is about. So creating content in less than an hour for for the month is relatively easy. So um, you want to create pillar content and then from there micro content and then distribute across social media. This is something I learned from Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. Um, so what he'll do is they'll create video record a podcast or a live talk or an interview and then chop that up into smaller videos um, post them over LinkedIn and then um, you'll be able to review which topics work the best so you can create more content like that. It's exactly how I do it with my clients. Uh, we create um, 20 videos from a one hour interview. All of those titles, um, subtitles, B-roll footage, all of the editing, we put a hook at the start. And so that's something that we do very cost effectively, by the way, because there's actually only one hour of filming with a client and then the video guys edit the rest of it. Um, so it's a very cost effective way to create really professional videos 
Um, so if any of you guys are interested in that, DM me on LinkedIn. We'll get you set up on our, on our content um, a content service. So this is how we create a content calendar. You need to be planning your content in advance. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm just sharing this with you because it's pretty basic. I mean, if you want this template, write calendar in the comments. I'm more than happy to share it with you. Um, but this is what we use. It's a, it's a Google Sheets. Um, so if you want a copy of it, uh, then, then just, just uh, write calendar in the comments. I'll follow all these up um, after the live. Um, and then you just see, you know, uh, throughout the month of January, we got video one going up on this Wednesday, image one on this. And then if you click on these, there's actually another tab down here in the Google Sheet, which is in the template, um, which actually has the, the image and the caption uh, for that post. So you're not wor wondering what to post every week. It's already planned out in advance. It doesn't take you long to do this. You can do this in half an hour um, ahead, of the, ahead of the month. And I'd great to see a lot of you typing in calendar. If you want a copy of this template, more than happy to share it with you. It's not complicated, guys, but I'm more than happy to, to, to send you the link to the Google Sheet we use for our clients. Um, and again, if you want us to do your content marketing for us, send me a DM. Um, okay. Going live like this on LinkedIn is a really cool way to get more engagement. 20 times more likely to share a video post. Um, live streams have increased by 4 to 37 in 2020. Um, hasn't slowed down, so I know this stat is a little bit old, but it hasn't slowed down. Um, you're getting a lot more reactions, a lot more comments um, by going live. On, on LinkedIn events, this is, um, you can invite people. It comes across, a lot of you guys would have seen this. So the way that I market this LinkedIn event is I set the event up on LinkedIn and then I start inviting people in my network. And you, you can invite up to 1,000 people that you're connected with each week. So if you have 1,000 connections, you can invite them all to an event. It'll come across as a connection request in there. Um, they'll get a notification and say, so-and-so has invited you to this event. Um, so it's very easy for you to market the event to get people to attend because you send them personalized invite for free. If you've got more than 1,000 connections, you've got 3,000, Connections, for example, just market the event three weeks in advance and you can invite, invite all 3,000 people to the event. You don't have to be the owner of the event to invite people. So all of you could have actually invited 1,000 people as well. So it becomes important to like think about collaborations. Do I want to involve someone else in this event that's also got an audience? They can invite their audience. Do I want to interview someone? They can invite their audience. So um, very easy to invite your entire network. So the network on LinkedIn becomes really valuable when you do things like this um, because you can very easily invite them all to, to join you. And um, it's recorded, so you can use the content later. You can chop it up, use it for micro content. Um, hey, Paul, good to see you here, mate. Hey, Gerald, good to see you, mate. Up in the Philippines. Some good advice there. Um, time of release. What about time of release, Cooper? Um, so the content, I assume you're talk, think, talking about when to post. I'm going to address this question. This is a valuable one. Um, so when it comes to posting content, you've got to think about when you, where your audience is, right? Um, so if your audience is local, the best time for you to post during the day is going to be in the morning. Um, because they've got all day when they're likely to be active on the platform for them to engage on it. Um, I interviewed one of my first big interviews. It was my third interview for LinkedIn Heroes, uh, Dr. John D. Martini. if any of you know who he is. Um, world famous uh, personal development speaker and um, oh, someone I admire a lot and, and have been to a lot of his a, a, a events since. Um, but um, I heard he was coming to Melbourne and I found out who was running the event. I, I said, hey, does he have time to do an interview? And he, she said, look, um, if you come along to the event, we'll see if we can sneak you in for an interview afterwards. And I managed to get the interview with him. And I got the interview back at 11 p.m. the next night. And I was so excited. I posted it on LinkedIn straight away and didn't get the engagement that I wanted on it because I did it at 11 p.m. at night when most of my audience is going to sleep. <laughs> And so what I ended up doing is posting it again a week later and I posted it on a Monday morning so that people are awake during the, you know, the initial engagement because you want engagement initially. And Monday allows people to be active Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So just on LinkedIn, it's important to know 
that people are less active in the evenings and less active on the on the weekends. So it's important to post your stuff in the morning. And um, I generally post better stuff earlier in the week. Um, doesn't mean to say you won't, won't get benefit from posting on the weekend, but if you want something to get as mo the most audience, most bang for buck, then then post it during the week in the morning. Um, this is a great example of how to generate leads from content, and I'll, I'll read this out to you for, for those of you that can't um, see it all. But go team! I was sitting in the boardroom with my good friend Ez at the Glide Agency headquarters when Julian told me his plan to raise a million bucks in three weeks. So this is a client that wanted some capital raising done. I thought to myself, this guy's either lost his marbles or he is an entrepreneurial genius. Either way, I was in. This is what a marketing dream team looks like when they're celebrating 1 million and 67,000 raised. Uh, congratulations to the entire camp at Tiller Rides and all the investors that decided to join what Julian refers to as the Tiller family. Fantastic to be part of this incredible journey. I'm grateful to work with such awesome professionals. This is just the beginning, we did it. Okay, so look, this um, particular client wanted to raise a million bucks through crowdfunding in three weeks. Um, and look, it wasn't all, it wasn't all the, the LinkedIn stuff. We were involved in it. Um, we contributed to that. They did some Facebook marketing as well. They did, they had another agency helping them. Um, and then, you know, when they reached their goal, they invited us down to their office for, for, um, for a drink to celebrate. And I got there and I realized no one was taking any photos. No one was posting on social media. <laughs> and so I said, Hey guys, let's get a photo together. And I, you know, and shared this on um, LinkedIn. I mentioned this before, but I got 45 businesses message me uh, saying that they wanted to raise capital for their business. So I generated leads by sharing this inspirational post about one of my clients. Um, the West Australian contacted the, C the CEO of Tilla Rise and wanted to write an article about this. So they got some PR out of it as well. Um, but it's something where you're sharing, it's not a win necessarily of myself, but you're sort of, win, it's like a win by association, sharing about your clients, and that generated a ton of leads. I would say this is one of the most successful posts I've ever done. Not because of the engagement numbers, but because of the amount of leads that it generated. All right, I'm gonna share with you a real real um, secret hack now. Um, this is something that, that uh, is a little bit of a trick to get loads of comments, right? So if you create what they call a lead magnet, and so all that is, is just a longer form piece of content. So for example, this is one of my lead magnets, it's called the ultimate guide to LinkedIn articles. And within there, it's got all of the things that I've learned about how to write LinkedIn articles. And by the way, um, this is available as well. Um, I am ha happy to share the, the link in the chat. Just drop, just drop in the comments articles if you want a copy of this. Um, I'll, I'll be able to find the link and send it to you as well. Uh, I've got a few things to send out, so bear with me. It'll be a couple, it might be a couple of days, but I will get it to you. Um, but um, I've, you, you create something like this. A lot of people, what they would do is they post about it and then they'd share the link. They'd be like, here you go. And then you fill in your name and email address and you get the thing, right? What I do is a little bit different. What I, when I post this, I say, if you want a copy of this, drop in the comments articles or write, write something in the comments, right? Yes, please, or whatever it is. And I'll, and I'll private message it to you. So rather than, um, rather than just sharing the link once and no one comments on your post, they just go off to the link and get the resource. You're getting all these comments from it as well because all these people want to get a copy of it. All you've got to do after that is private message it to people. Um, but it just means the post is going to get a lot more engagement. I mean, this is exactly what we're doing here is getting you guys to write in the comments. I mean, it's a bit more practical because we're live. Um, but how many comments have we managed to get in this LinkedIn Live just by offering free resources and getting people to comment? And that just means that the post will be amplified more and more. Um, so this is something you all, you all can be using to get people to comment more on your post. And, and this is a secret marketing hack. I mean, every time I share this with people, I, I see marketers get great results. A lot of my competitors use this strategy now, um, but it's a great way to, to generate a lot of engagement. And then when you get to the landing page, you know, you still can capture people's email address. Um, just don't waste people's time. Make sure you give them the resource right away when they fill in the form. Um, but then you've got their details if you want to promote something similar to them later on. Building your building your database off of LinkedIn. Um, this final example I'm going to share with you uh, because there's something about this post. 
that may not be 100% obvious. And this is uh, only posted two weeks ago. I just plugged this into the presentation this morning, um, which talks about how since I've had a child, I uh, haven't been posting as regularly on LinkedIn and, and now I'm going to start posting regularly again. Um, I've officially blown the dust off my LinkedIn account is the hook. Here's what you probably don't know. And then there's three bullet points. They're each, each bullet point is very short, one sentence, using numbers, things like this, just help make it really easy to pick for people to read. You can see this is very easy to read on a mobile device. There's no long paragraphs for people to get lost in. Um, and if you read through it, here's what you probably don't know. Over the years, I started posting every day. I've been getting hundreds of thousands of comments per post. I've built an audience of over 38,000 followers. Just a year and a half ago, I stopped posting regularly. How did this happen? 18 months ago, I was blessed with the most precious gift, my daughter. Sleepless nights, countless diapers, and unparalleled love. Uh, I won't go on and read the whole thing, um, but you can view this on my, on my LinkedIn um, post history. What will blow your mind is, I wrote this teamed up with AI. Can you believe it? It's a story format. It's got the hook at the start. The content's broken up. Um, and because I guided ChatGBT to help me, I said, this is what I want to say. I want to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm back on the platform. I've been off the platform for a while uh, because I've had my, my daughter uh, 18 months ago. And um, since, you know, while I was doing that, I was working with client and partners, not really expanding my business as much. Um, and now I'm back to show up consistently. I want you to write it in this way, use this many bullet points. I want the hook at the start to be this many words. And, um, and then what they gave me back, I kind of tweaked it a little bit, but this is something that AI's um, helped me write. And so I just thought that would be surprising because like the way it's worded is extremely, extremely good. Most of this was AI. I cut out a little bit of the fluff, um, but it literally took me about oh, between five to 10 minutes to create this post. Um, and so use ChatGPT, if, if you haven't uh, accessed ChatGPT yet, chat.openai.com. The free, I've got the paid version, but the free version I think is whew, about 90% of, of the way is good. Um, it's pretty awesome. I can't say I noticed too much difference with the paid version. Um, and you can get it to create content ideas for you. You say, give me 10 content ideas about this topic. You can get it to help write stories for you. Um, it save you a lot of time. Just make sure that you're editing the content afterwards to cut down the number of words it's using. It tends to like to use more, longer paragraphs, and make it a bit too professional. You just want to work with ChatGPT. So every time it gives you a, a thing, I'll make it more casual, make the sentences shorter, um, and then you can create content like this. AI is something we're going to need to understand. The, the, the world's changed. If you're in the business of just doing things like writing things or, or, or creating videos and stuff, you need to be able to adapt because the value is now in act is actually being able to work with AI um, because it's just like working with a, hundred, a team of 100 at your fingertips. Um, so really encourage you to guys to start using AI in your content. Just be careful, tread carefully. You need to be able to Tell, tell the AI what you need it to do in the right way and you need to be able to edit what it um, outputs back to you. Um, but it can save you a lot of time with your copywriting. All right, now this is probably the most valuable part of the presentation, um, the $500 million LinkedIn strategy. I'm gonna talk about three steps lead generation here. Now, there's a three steps to find, connect and engage. This doesn't really have anything to do with content. I mean, content will improve your conversion rates. But LinkedIn is not like Instagram. It's not like YouTube, uh, where people just follow you and whoever follows you follows you. you can, here you can invite people to join your network, invite people to join your audience. Um, you know, all of the people that, that I connected with when I was targeting medical practices, I invited them to follow me and now they see my content. And, and sure, my, my industry has changed. Now I've got a lot of business to business professionals, financial services professionals, um, but most of them I invited to, to join my network. Sure, now these days I get a lot of people follow me and all that, but um, a lot, to start it off, I invited people to join my network. So it's about finding the right people and to do that, you use LinkedIn search. You've got to go into the granular details of all of the features of LinkedIn search. So not just using the search bar at the top, you've got to go a little bit more than that make sure you're searching for industries, go specific industries. So when you go to the search bar at the top, you'll see a button that says all filters, click on all filters, and then choose the industries that you want to target. If you don't have an industry that you target, choose one to start with. 
because you'll get a better results if you focus on one industry. You want to uh, target second degree connections, people that have mutual connections with you. It's a little bit like when you go to a networking event, um, you're much more likely to exchange business cards with somebody um, that knows the same people you do. You've got a bit more rapport there anyway, let's put it that way. Um, and so second degree connections, uh, you want to put in industry and then probably want to use something like job titles. So let's say you want to target CEOs of financial services companies that know the same people you do. So you click second degree connections, uh, the industry might be financial services or investment banking. Um, and then in the headline, you would type in CEO and that'll give you a list of all of the people that meet that criteria. Um, so that's the fine stage. Then when you connect with them, you want to be uh, sharing a customized connection request. So you can see that this pops up, you can customize uh, this invitation. So you add a note, right? Uh, here's an example of what you could write. Hi, Peter, I've noticed your profile as we work in similar fields as, and it seems we know a number of the same people. I'm interested in learning more about what you do and would like to invite you to join my network. So the first thing is you've customized it, right? So you're gonna stand out from the crowd by default just because you've bothered to write something. Show interest in the other person. So I've noticed your profile and we work in similar fields. I'm interested in learning more about what you do um, rather than saying, hey, I run this LinkedIn marketing agency, we've run all this awards and it's all about yourself. Show interest in the other person. There's one thing I guarantee you everyone likes to talk about and that's themselves. Um, all right, so, this, and some of this stuff's gonna be in the templates um, document that I'm gonna be sending out to guys. So if you want the 12 best LinkedIn templates, drop in templates in the comments. We've, we've covered that already, but if you just joined us, uh, drop in templates. Um, by the way, uh, this is not a paid function. We can do this with free LinkedIn. Um, Sales Navigator, sure, has a few more uh, things that you can put in like company size and stuff like that, but you don't need to have Sales Navigator to do any of this stuff. Um, it's a free function. Now I know why I've received a lot of these messages on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, good one, Gail. Um, well, I hope they're, work <laughs> I hope they're working. Um, all right, now here, here's how the numbers work. So this is an example from Clarity Interiors. They do office fits out, fit outs. And one of my clients, we, we run these lead generation campaigns for clients. We've been doing it for 10 years. Um, definitely the most, the, the biggest part of my business. If you want to run, generate leads on LinkedIn, DM me after this. Um, Clarity Interiors, we're targeting facility managers, right? So buildings that have facility managers so they can talk to them about the office fit out. Say the 241 connection requests. So send out those customized invites. They had 75% of those people accept the connection request. So they've got 183 people in their new audience. Not only can they approach these with private messages, but they're also gonna be seeing their content moving forward. Um, send 183 messages to the new connections, saying something like, hey, thanks for connecting. I'd love to learn more about what you do, see if there's an opportunity for us to work together. Um, 75 phone calls off the back of it, 41% conversion rate. Here's another industry. Uh, this is the College for Adult Learning in Melbourne, um, registered trading organization. They generated 122 leads within the first month of their lead generation campaign. We were targeting three industries. Um, we've got hospital and healthcare, HR manager, food production, HR manager again, and not-for-profit targeting HR managers. HR managers are, are pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, so look, with... Um, Let's look at food production in the middle as an example. So sent out 505 requests, uh, only got 195 new connections, only 38%, um, still 195 connections they didn't have before, but, and we didn't send messages to all of them. We sent messages to 160. There were some in there that we chose not to contact. Um, and then 38% of people book calls, 61 leads, huge conversion rate from engagement to leads. So look, that is working really well at this end. We could have probably improved the connection request at this end, but I mean, the stats from 505 requests, 61 leads is, is astronomical. Um, you can see in hospital and healthcare, we got more connections. Conversion rates to leads wasn't as good, but it's still a huge amount of leads they managed to get uh, in, in there as well. Um, so that's another example from one of our clients. By the way, we generated far too many leads for this company because after one month, they had to pause their campaign because they needed time to follow all of, all of these up. <laughs> so we shot ourselves in the foot there with generating too many leads, but very pleased it worked well for them. 
they were spending a fortune on AdWords to get this, the, the leads before and they weren't nearly as targeted. They were getting leads from all over the place. Before we move on to the next slide, I'm just gonna jump this question in here from Ryan. Um, do you find Sales Navigator to be worth the price point? Um, look, I recommend it for all my clients because I know that we're gonna be active. I know we're gonna be doing all this. So making a few improvements with the targeting, being able to reach a few more people makes a big difference. Um, what I suggest people doing it, if you're doing it yourself is, is start off with a free version. Once you're generating return on investment and you see it working for you, then, um, then it's worthwhile investing in Sales Navigator. But you don't need it to be successful by any means. Um, so I hope that answers the question. So final thought, um, before I get, get into the next offer, which is the most valuable out of all the ones I've mentioned, <laughs> we've, we've been through a lot of offers. If you, if you haven't heard all the offers, you have to go through and watch it again. But um, the next one I, I uh, offer is gonna be the best of the bunch. But I, I wanna leave you with this thought. Social media creates conversations. Conversations create relationships and relationships create sales and return on investment. Too many people jump from social media to return on investment. Social media is where you create conversations with all of your content, with the comments that you get, with the private messages you're doing. Focus on creating conversations because if you build relationships, you will grow your business. I've been doing this long enough to know that conversations create relationships and relationships create return on investment. Um, so always keep that in mind with everything you're doing on social media. And finally, just for being here live with me um, and, and showing up, uh, I would like to offer you a complimentary review of your profile. Um, th this is the link to use if you would like to book that in. That goes direct to my calendar so you can select a time that suits you. Um, bb.consulting slash 15 mins. Um, so that's what, uh, how long it will take to review your profile. If you wanna talk about any of our services, whether it's lead generation, content marketing, or managing LinkedIn ads, or even getting some training done for your team members, or even coaching just for yourself, we can go a little bit longer than 15 minutes, always allow a little bit longer if you wanna talk about some of our services as well. But this is my way of adding a bit of value and then inviting you to take the next step to, to work with me a bit more. It's definitely not gonna be a hardcore sales call, it's more just about explaining the value we provide and see if it's a good fit for your business or not. Um, thank you again for being here. The most valuable thing that you can do to help promote um, what we're doing here is to repost this. So share it with your network, share the love with the, your audience. And um, we'll be doing these every quarter. The next one I'm gonna be talking a lot more about um, how you can integrate AI with what you're doing on LinkedIn. But I hope you found that valuable, guys. Appreciate you all being in and ha have a great day ahead in business.